characteristics of the phylum. Um, the foot is a large muscle that they use for locomotion. That's the main thing that it uses it for. To move. To escape from predators, to burrow into the sand, um, and just to kind of creep along on the foot if you're a snail. They also use it for anchoring. So um, <coughs> some kinds of animals, ga uh, gastropods and stuff, will live like in the intertidal zone or close to the intertidal zone where there's a lot of wave action. And so they're going to want to kind of stay in place and not get swept out to see where they'll die. So they use their like little foot as a suction cup and suction onto the rock so that they don't get washed up to sea. So they'll use it to anchor in place or they'll use it for predation. So for like squid and octopus, their arms are their, their foot and they'll use those to like reach out and grab their prey and then bring it up to their mouth. Um, whereas like we've got things like a moon snail that has this big giant foot that it'll use to actually wrap around clams and prevent the clam from getting away and it eats the clam. A moon snail. Yeah, um, they've got a big giant foot. So here's different pictures of the foot. So this is like a limp at the underside. So this part right here, that's the foot. Okay, um, and then this is actually how a clam digs. So this is its foot. It'll stick its foot out from between its two shells, um, and then like create like an anchor at the base, and then pull itself towards that anchor, and then stick it out and create the anchor and pull it. So they can dig into the clam that way. Um, all right. The radula. So the radula is a toothy tongue. So it's a tongue that has teeth on it. Uh, and it is used to obtain food. You use it to eat. Uh, how many of you have been licked by a cat? Right? Do you feel like the, the roughness of the tongue? A radula is kind of like that. But depending on what the animal is eating, um, the teeth on that tongue will actually be different. Um, so, like, we actually have, like, the moon snail will have big, sharp teeth on its tongue in order to burrow through shells of clams, whereas, like, limpets and gastropods, like snails, will um, be moving around and they'll have, like, flat teeth that they'll use to scrape algae off of rock. So, the radula is a toothy tongue that they will use to eat. Bivalves don't have one. So, bivalves, like, clams and mussels and oysters and scallops, they don't have radula because they're filter feeders, so they don't need one. Um, but everything else does have one. And they can be toxic, like the cone snail can have a toxic radula. So here's the, the radula inside the mouth. Okay? Um, and so if this was like a snail, it, would, it could use this radula to like lick algae off of rocks. Um, what's cool is that these teeth, if you're a snail that's licking algae off of rocks, they're going to get dull, right? And so in order to keep feeding, you need to replace those teeth. And so they create teeth back here in the radula sac. Um, and then as these wear down, they fall off. And then these move forward in kind of like a conveyor belt and pop into place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So their teeth never get dull. Or if they do get dull, they fall off. Right? So they can keep feeding. So here's pictures of radulas. So um, this is the underside of a limpet. Okay, so see this big white thing right here? That is the foot of the snail, or the limpet. Um, and then here is their mouth. Okay, and then inside of there, this would be their radula. Um, limpets walk around licking algae off of rocks, so they don't need big, sharp teeth. Theirs are much more flat, used for kind of like scooping algae up. Okay, um, whereas the moon snail, okay, that eats clams, this is its radula. Can you see like the actual like teeth on there? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So they're going to use that um, to drill through the holes of clams. So they take their big giant foot, wrap it around a clam, and then use this radula to burrow through the shell and eat the clam. How many of you have been at the beach and found like a little clam shell that has a perfectly round little hole through it? That's a clam that was eaten by a moon snail. Okay. So and then it washed up on shore. What? Yeah, because it's dead. So it's just the half of the clam. Yeah. Um, so they need big hefty teeth on there in order to feet, right, and burrow through those shells. This is a cone snail. Uh, so a cone snail has this thing called the proboscis that it sticks out and it looks like a worm. <laughs> fish. And so fish are like, beep, 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 ooh, worm, food. So they swim over to the proboscis and then out of the proboscis comes this. This is the radula of the snail. It's like a harpoon, full of toxins. Mm -hmm. So do to do, swim over to the worm and then, you know, spear in the face and then you're paralyzed when you get eaten by the Where snail. The, the so, snail on the so the snail is back over here, um, and then so the fish swims up 
gets stabbed and then it is paralyzed and gets pulled into the mouth of it. So, yeah. and, you know, that's, you know, that's a little fish. Some of these, will, some of the cocktails will be bigger and they'll eat larger fish. But their mouth actually can go pretty wide and they can eat pretty big things. Like so, an anaconda. Kind of like an anaconda, yeah. Uh, is that dumb to like swim into a spear or spear to you? It doesn't look like a spear to them, it looks like a worm. So they're like, ooh, food. And so they swim over there and it's actually a cone snail for most of them. And then they die. That's the radula. The mantle is the tissue that covers and surrounds the internal organs. And its main job is to secrete the shell. All right. So it makes and repairs the shell of the mollusk. That shell is for protection. Um, the mantle can also be used for protection. So how many of you, after the dissection on Tuesday or in somewhere else, have touched like a clam or a squid okay, or like a snail, right? What does it feel like? Goopy. Goopy, yeah. It's like slippery, right? And it's not easy to hold on to. Um, so the mantle is very slippery. Um, and so when things try and like grab on to, to all sorts of mollusks, and if they get the mantle, it can be hard to hold on to because it can be slippery. So it can be used for protection. So you can see like this right here, everywhere that's black right here, that's actually the mantle of this limpet. limpet a limpet is like a snail that has a flat shell. Okay, um, and so if something tried to grab onto that limpet, uh, it would be kind of slippery and hard to grab. We may find some of those kinds of limpets at the tide pools when we go in the spring. So we found limpets before. Um, and then squid, okay, squid and octopus and cuttlefish use their mantle for jet propulsion. So they actually will pull water into the mantle. So this is the mantle right here that surrounds the internal organs. Um, and so they pull water into here and then they squeeze it out through the siphon. Okay, the siphon narrows the opening and so it shoots them forward. All right. Um, and if you've ever eaten, how many of you have ever eaten calamari, like the rings of calamari? Oh, yeah. Okay, what you're actually eating is the mantle of the squid okay, that surrounds their internal organs. So you'll eat that part. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So you're eating the tentacles. You eat the tentacles. I don't like the tentacles. You don't like them? No, oh, it feels like you're eating like eating an actual animal. <laughs> it's like eating like no, stupid, but that's true. Oh, lemon. Sweet some lemon. Not good stuff. I like the rings of calamari. Are you just howling the rings of Saturday? Yeah. Okay, the shell. Obviously, calling me. The shell. Okay, it is a hard outer covering that's made out of calcium carbonate lined with gel. Okay, um, and the shell is primarily used for protection. They can actually modify their shell um, by adding like spines if they're in an area where they get are under a lot of predation, so pressure from predators. So they can actually add spines to their shell in order to try and protect them. Um, here is a picture of. Uh, shell that has a bunch of spines on it to, for protection. Uh, and then they can also like bulk up their shell if they need to, uh, if they live in an area that has a lot of predators. So these pictures right here, this is actually the same species of limpet, but in different areas where there's different amounts of predators. So this one all the way here on the right, that one is like where they live and there's not a lot of predators. And then this one on the left, that's like the same limpet, same type of limpet, but in an area where there's lots of predators. So they can actually bulk up their shell if they need to, which is kind of cool. Squid have a reduced uh, shell. You'll pull it out tomorrow in the dissection. Um, you'll pull out the, what's called the pen, and that helps you get structure and support to the squid. And then you'll actually use it to like pop the ink sack and write something on a piece of paper. Can you eat the eye? You can eat the eye of squid, yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, sea slugs and octopus don't have a shell. So, um, octopus, ha have you ever seen an, uh, an octopus like squeeze through like itty bitty spaces? Okay. Yeah, they're crazy, right? Those spaces that they can squeeze through. Because they don't have a shell, they're, they have a, an entirely soft body except for their beak. 
okay, the beak in the middle of their mouth. So the only thing that they are limited by, the size of like what they can fit through, is by the size of their beak. So they can squeeze their body through pretty much any opening as long as it's slightly larger than their beak, which is kind of crazy. So they can fit through lots of different things. The shell has three layers. Okay. Um, you've got the periosteum, which is the outermost layer. It's got lots of protein in it, and it helps to um, keep the shell from dissolving. Okay. So calcium carbonate would eventually dissolve in the water, and the protein on the outside helps to keep it from even starting to dissolve. The prismatic layer is the middle layer. Okay, that's the bulk of the shell. So that's made of calcium carbonate and protein. And then the inside layer is the nacreous layer. Um, and it's made out of calcium carbonate as well. But the calcium carbonate is laid down in a different crystal structure than in the prismatic layer. And because it's laid down in a different crystal structure, it gives you mother of pearl. Right? So the innermost layer is the nacreous layer. That's the mother of pearl layer of the shell. The nacreous layer is actually what the oyster will put over ear tint and make pearls. Okay. This is an adelaide, right? This is an adelaide, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why is it that like, as valuable as like a pearl? Because you could take any abalone or stuff and find it. Whereas like pearls are much more rare. Well, like even if it's like more intricate or like bigger, it's still not as valuable. Not as valuable, no. Are they valuable at all? Yeah. Oh yeah. So abalone were um, close to extinction in some areas because they're hunted for the mother of pearl and for their meat. So, are yeah, like some are or something, like that. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like not farm. Not yeah. Farm. yeah, they're super expensive. So, but that's the nacreous layer on the inside. Um, I'll pass this around so you can look at it. You can actually see the three layers of the shell because um, part of this is it's dead. So part of it's kind of um, been worn away. So you can see like the brown, like outermost layer, and then the calcium carbonate, the white layer in the middle, and then the mother of pearl. Okay, so you can see the three layers. Yeah. So it's not like um, an animal moved into the shell. So here's the periosteum on the outside, the prismatic on the middle, and then the nacreous layer, and then the mantle that secretes that shell. Um, if a mollusk wants to grow, Okay, it will actually secrete the periosteum and the prismatic layer at the edge of the shell. So this is my little snail shell. If the snail, when it grows, it's going to secrete the prismatic and the periosteum at the edge. Okay, and then like secrete more, secrete more, secrete more, and it's going to wrap around and it's going to keep growing that way. All right. Um, the nacreous layer is always secreted. Right. So they always are secreting that. The way pearls are made, so when an irritant, like a grain of sand, gets into an oyster, grains of sand are sharp, right? They've got like little sharp edges that's irritating to a soft-bodied animal, okay? So just like if you get a bunch of sand in your shoes or something like that, it's irritating, right? It's not comfortable. It is the worst. Um, they, so what they do is they take that sharp edge thing and they secrete this nacreous layer around it and create a little pearl, which doesn't have sharp edges. Right? Um, and so 